all know the really depressing story of the aerial sea. In 1957, it was looking good. Then we have Soviet irrigation projects, cotton farmers that are starting to eat up down in the southeast, fish and wildlife, pesticides, fertilizer, uh, other bad things that are coming in there, the largest cotton exporter coming out of Uzbekistan, and finally, it is the aerial sea today. It's pretty much a crying kitty. Environmental collapse plus pollution plus end of traditional coastal lifestyles. Albion is an alternative name for the island of Great Britain. It comes from a Greek language. It is sometimes used poetically to refer to the island, but has fallen out of common use in English. Obviously, Scottish Gaelic says Alba. I've heard of that. These names were later Latinized as Albania. The names were Latinized as Albania. Oh my god. Everything is coming together now. The United Kingdom is rightfully Albanian. And what does that mean for all the former British colonies? Are we all Albanian deep down inside? Even us in the US? European missionaries trying to Christianize Ethiopia. Meanwhile, Ethiopians who've been Christians for the past 1,000 years. I'm four parallel universes ahead of you. This is one of my favorite facts to drop to blow my friends' minds. This African nation was one of the first regions in the world to officially adopt Christianity. They was doing it before it was cool. The US and USSR, which side will you take? The West or the East? Meanwhile, Yugoslavia, there's three, actually. Two just isn't enough. How about a third choice? Yugoslavia sure was a diplomatic mastermind during the Cold War. Communist nation, but decided to not join either side. And pretty much starting the whole non-aligned movement trend for everybody. The German Empire carefully picking the worst allies to fight with in WW1. We'll take a little bit of Austria Hungary and a little bit of the dying man of Europe, which is the Ottomans. There we go. That is our Marvel Avengers team of horrible allies. Maybe they just wanted to make it harder on themselves. They were so confident they thought they could carry the team on their back. Oh yeah, let's also not forget about Bulgaria. Every civilization when it comes to the smallest detail. Meanwhile, every civilization when it comes to getting drunk. It's like literally the only thing we can all agree on in history. Let's poison our body with this substance because we have fun in the moment. Next morning's not going to be too great though, but... That doesn't matter. When basically every river and creek in Canada had yet to form, the city of Jericho had already been founded for thousands of years. Even the pyramids were built thousands of years later after Jericho. We're talking 9,000 BC. It really makes you think. 1849, Samuel Robothman writes a book about flat earth, reviving the flat earth theory in the modern era. Meanwhile, more than 2,000 years before that, this dude measuring the earth's circumference using two vertical sticks. And it was literally one of the most genius ideas ideas. It's a little bit scary just how smart humans were even at this time. My child will defend every inch of their nation no matter the opposition. Meanwhile, this Australian leader, yeah, I think he has other plans after all. This was basically the defense proposal during WW2 in which the Australians would basically give some of the continent to the Japanese. Luckily, they did not have to do this, but if you know anything about the geography and the population density of this continent, it's actually not a terrible idea. At least in my opinion. I mean, in an absolute worst case scenario, all your people are on this side anyways. What's the Japanese gonna be able to do with the Outback after all? Just fight some kangaroos and emus? Obviously this is a controversial, like, take at the time. Like, <laughs> definitely not a good idea to tell your entire nation that we're just gonna give up on, like, 80% of our land. The British Empire in the eyes of all their colonies? Meanwhile, the British Empire to Fiji. Yeah, some places in the Empire were treated a lot more kind than others. This also reminds me of how some places in the Empire had to literally fight and claw their way to independence. Meanwhile, with Canada, they were just like, here you go. Go ahead, buddy. You can be free. Civil wars in the USA. I just want to keep my slaves. No. Meanwhile, civil wars in Brazil. Sir, we've just finished bombarding the desert cult peasants with heavy artillery. Want us to commit atrocities too? I, uh, I already think I know what he's gonna say. Brazil had no chill. Just ask Paraguay during the Triple Alliance War. Non-hidden famous war crimes. USA war crimes. Then there's secret Brazilian war crimes. The Six-Year War of the Triple Alliance in which Paraguay confronted the combined forces of Brazil, Argentina, and Uruguay had inflicted apocalyptic damage. I didn't even say that right. 90% of their entire male population perished. The entire internet looking on in awe at Vlad the Impaler who fought off the Ottomans and impaled thousands of them. Meanwhile, they eventually took over all of his lands and decapitated them. That's a lesser known part of the memes, I guess. They don't talk about that often. I put Vlad's head on a stake. Meanwhile, this guy also did still have 30,000 of his own men um, in 
impaled. So I don't really know who won this battle. I guess it all depends on the context. Talk about a Balkan moment. Breaking up with a person, small brain. Breaking up over text, slightly bigger brain. Building a freaking church so you can get divorced. This man was out here playing 4D chess. He really wanted to break up, I guess. He just liked his wife so much, he made a whole separate church. And people say dating is hard nowadays. Fact, 90% of Roman emperors invading Persia quit right before they're about to conquer it, turn it into a client state. Oh, small footnote here, please ignore the fact that those territories are too far away to maintain control over it. Now, if not, that doesn't matter. The Romans definitely could have expanded a little bit more to the right. I mean, Alexander the Great did it for like a couple years there until it all exploded. Roman soldiers saying, halt, who goes there, strange person? Where are you from? I come from the future. What are your guys' names? My name is Quintus, as I'm the fifth child in my family. My comrade's name is Sextus, for he was the sixth child in his family. Anyways, what's your name? My name is... Liv... Oh my god. <laughs> How many people does this person have in their family? I'm assuming this is a Roman numeral joke, referring that she has 13 other siblings. She's the 14th. I'd be freaked out too if I was a soldier. Yo, I was crazy. Wait, sorry, my Roman numeral dyslexia strikes again. Uh, she would actually be 54, Liv. L is 50, minus 1, 5. Meanwhile, the Germans out here trying to cheat as they stare at the American rail network during the US Civil War. Well, I guess that would technically be the Prussians then, but I I see what you're saying. And this is made even more funny when you compare Germans' modern day rail network compared to ours right now. What? happened. This is not what we have, this is what we want, because we have literally none of this. You introduce policies to get your population more educated and birth rate under control. The citizens are more educated and birth rates start dropping. The birth rates start dropping even below one replacement rate and your educated citizens don't want to start families. You start a new scheme to get people to have more babies and your party gets pushed back in the next election. I feel like a lot of nations can relate to these first three panels. Um, the last one gets a little crazy though. This one is specifically referring to Singapore though. We need more babies, but don't you dare bring any of that gum in here. It's banned in the whole country. Most Renaissance painters, today I will paint some angels. Meanwhile, Da Vinci, dissecting this corpse will help my art look more realistic. He was basically a method actor at his time. Maybe it wasn't necessary, but to him, it definitely was. He went above and beyond. People having a meltdown about Cillian Murphy's name being pronounced Killian, not Cillian. Look, I did it right there. Me, patiently waiting to inform them how Caesar and Cicero... Cicero? We're really pronounced. Cicero. Is it Cicero? Kaiser. Is it Kaiser? Be kind of weird. Oh yeah, that was like literally the first question. Something like Kaiser. Ironic. Been hearing for a while his name is actually Killian. I just can't stop saying it with the S. Rasputin wondering why the Russian nobles who invited him to dinner are all staring at him while he's trying to enjoy his cakes and wine. Something seems a little fishy. And he was right. That's how he was going to meet his doom. Whatever. At least we got a cool song out of it. Cowboys were so cool dueling and collecting bounties. Yeah, that really was the wildlife. Meanwhile, the average cowboy, some weirdo, tried to instigate a duel to the death, so the sheriff locked him up. What an absolute idiot. See, it probably wasn't that easy to start a random duel. The 101st Airborne, as viewed by Americans. Meanwhile, as viewed by the Vietnamese. Apparently during the Vietnam War, the Vietnamese never knew what a bald eagle was, which makes sense. I don't know why someone in Vietnam would know what a bald eagle is at this time. So they thought they were like actually scary chicken men. Arguably even more intimidating those words. Pirates in fiction. I'm gonna steal all your money and then eat you alive. No, you're a maniac versus pirates in reality. Regarding the economic crisis we are facing, I have no other choice but to rob you, but don't worry, I won't hurt you, I'm not a savage. No problem, I know there's nothing personal there. Just kind of doing your job. What a sweet interaction. I really think it depends on what type of pirates we're talking about, because there are sources that, you know, pirates did some horrific things. Tankies upon learning of the 1941 Lend-Lease. Act. Yeah, the tankies are probably not a big fan of the whole Lend-Lease Act thing. As a side note, the first Soviet unit to enter Berlin was the first mechanized corpse, part of the Second Guards tank army, and as it turns out, the first mechanized corpse was completely equipped with Shermans. So in essence, American tanks reached Berlin before the Soviet tanks. Ouch. In a way, I guess that's how we get our dub. We got there first. <laughs> Aw, look, it's Daddy Latin with all their offspring. And here is everyone grown up. There's Romanian, Italian, Catalan, French. Romanish, Spanish, Portuguese, Portugal.
Galician, I guess I should say. Meanwhile, Latin not doing as good as they once were. There's also Dog Latin. What is Dog Latin? Oh, okay, that's what I assumed, but I wasn't sure. In a way, Latin never went extinct, it just evolved. That's a better way to look at it. We all know this is the true successor to the original Latin, though. Big thanks to my patrons. Destiny. <laughs> 9,000. Drew needs to pay his taxes. Why am I doing Karina this? Best John, girl. Denver, I'm the kidnapper. Jack Oof, Traven, Drew's the annoying friend. Ransom, this Inquisitor, Zarek. Inquisitor, Zarek. 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 Caleb, Zarek. 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 Zarek.